It's September 12th, 1987. My name is Major Alan Schaefer, also known as Dutch, U.S. Army veteran, Special Ops Commander, and the only survivor of the Valverde incident. These tapes are my personal testimony. Insurance. Should anything happen to me, what I found won't be lost. My team was brought in to rescue a Guatemala cabinet minister and his aide who had been captured by guerrilla forces in Valverde. We located the downed helicopter and the skinned bodies of those aboard, hung in nearby trees, seemingly at the hands of guerrilla fighters. After assaulting their camp, it became clear that the mission was a setup. American intelligence had sent us to retrieve the captured agents who had been on recon for future military action. But none of that matters. Because while we were clearing out the guerrillas, something was hunting us. 
An invisible kill attracted us as we made our way to the extraction point. In 24 hours, it wiped out my entire team. Rick Hawkins, Blaine Cooper, Mac Elliott, Billy Soul, Jorge Ramirez, and Al Dillon. The best soldiers I've ever known. Men I trusted with my life were butchered like animals. It was a nightmare. We walked in with guns, but it had perfect camouflage, advanced weaponry, and could see heat. It was strong and smart, a pitiless hunter. I waited, I watched, and when I understood it, when I saw how it hunted, I killed it. As it lay dying, in a final fuck you, it activated an explosive device. I barely escaped that blast. My radiation sickness and the crater of the explosion are the only evidence it ever was here. I have given my official statement to Agent Peter Keys of the OWLF, but it's become clear I needed to investigate Valverde myself. Keys was thorough, but he asked all the wrong questions. I mean, we have proof of alien life, but that life sees us as game. It's an alien whose first contact with humanity was to hunt us for sport. All Keyes cared about was the technology lost in the explosion. He can see the jungle for the trees. I see the threat. He sees the opportunity. Spies are all the same. I mean, we aren't people to them. We are assets. How many soldiers will he feed to those monsters just for a chance to steal from them or to learn from them? The government can't be trusted. So I will have to do this on my own. I'm cutting my treatment short and going off the grid. I will make my way back to South America to Valverde. I was told that there were stories about demons who make trophies of man. I'd like to hear those stories. April 8th, 1991. I'm not dead yet. I'll admit, I regret not curing my radiation sickness before I left. It made leaving the country difficult. I cashed in a few favors, took one too many off the book flights in rusted up buckets, but I made it back to Valverde. The area was on lockdown, sealed by American intelligence for study. The complex centered on a crater from the alien self-destruction. I found the scientists slumming in the local bar. A few drinks, a couple of threats later, he was ready to talk. It wasn't much, barely anything I didn't already know. The blast emitted a form of radiation they'd never seen before. Some believed it was extraterrestrial, some didn't. Either they're not too bright or there's nothing to find. I decided to let them keep searching in vain. It kept them busy and off my trail. I've been touring villages and small towns using the cover of an author writing about South American folklore. I don't know if any of them bought in, but they took my money and told the stories. The closer they were to the jungle, the more stories of devils in the trees. Some were bullshit, made up on the spot, but some carried consistencies that I couldn't ignore. Whatever it was, the demons who make trophies of man, the devil of the trees, or the skull taker, the stories always began on the hardest summer that they could remember. In the summer of 1987, Valverde barely broke its all-time high in temperatures. They loved the heat. It must remind them of home. Everything else confirmed the truth of the stories. Proud warriors skinned and hanged, skulls and spines ripped from their bodies. Maybe it was obvious from the beginning, but it wasn't until I heard the stories that I truly accepted the purpose of these mutilations. I mean, they're taking trophies. They travel impassable distances to hunt us, skin us, and mount us over some alien fireplace on another world. 
it would be disgusting if it weren't so familiar. Where do I go now? It's been on my mind all year. The takeaway from all this intel is that they've been doing this for decades, centuries maybe. They're coming back and I need to be there when they do. June 27th, 1992. It's hard to remember that the most important part of an operation is patience. You can plan the perfect op, but you can't account for everything. If shit goes south, there's nothing to do but to adapt and finish the mission. Sometimes you just get lucky. I was in the dark, 10 clicks down river from the Valverde border, figuring out my next move. I was ready to pack it in. I mean, I thought that I learned everything that I could, that there was nothing left for me to find. The OWLF had abandoned the detonation site a year ago. And I thought that they already shipped back to America. That's when I saw Agent Peter Keyes tie his skiff to the dock. I mean, I haven't seen Keys since I gave my official statement to him. It was impossible, but there he was with three of his buddies. All agents. I mean, the clean, tidy outfits give them away all the time. I mean, they don't want to get down in the dirt, you see. That's what they pay soldiers to do. Keys walked up, looked right at me, and shook my hand. I mean, with the radiation sickness, I've lost a lot of weight, so I thought that he maybe would not recognize me, but then he greeted me like we were old pals. Keys is a good spy, saying nothing, implying everything. We spent the next few hours trading war stories at the bar. If you'd heard us, you would never have suspected that we were trading intel on an alien manhunter. His cover was that they have been looking for a serial killer, a sadist who has been operating in the area for years, hunting people like animals and then skinning them alive. Keys wanted to talk about the monster, so it all came out in the cover story. In many ways, they were just a few steps behind, surveying villages for information, locating witnesses. He did confirm one thing that only considered. He told me how the killer chose his victims. They were always armed a rifle, a pistol, a knife in the boot. He wasn't taking kids or random villages. He wanted a challenge. Whatever it was, it was a hunter. When it killed, it killed for sport. I wish they were here for a military action, recon for an invasion, but the truth was so much worse. We are prey, animals, fit only to be hunted. Keys and his buddies paid the tab and mine, but before he left, he winked at me and he said, stay out of the jungle. That's where he gets you. I tracked Keys and his team for weeks, but they didn't learn anything new. Maybe they knew that I was there, maybe they didn't, I don't know. I've risked enough for now. I think it's time to disappear, keep my ear to the ground. Be patient. March 3rd, 1996, Zaire. I thought I could wait. I thought that I could hold back and make my move at the right time. I couldn't. Fuck. I had to find them. I needed to hunt it or let it hunt me. I joined up with any private military company that was headed into the hot zone. I pulled every string, cashed out every favor just to follow the sweat and the death that attracted the demon. I eventually put together a team myself. They thought that I was a legend. And I let them believe that. <laughs> I'm quiet and good in what I do. They needed them to see me as a legend so that it could take them to die.
get up on my own. You ain't gonna die today.
I, uh, I don't know how you made it out of there. I'm sorry for the amount of casualties. Stay strong, soldier.